Hello all, welcome to this lecture. In the previous lecture, we have seen the concepts related to sine triangle PWM, where we are able to generate the symmetry within the whole voltage waveforms and thus we are able to eliminate some of the harmonics which are even or triple n harmonics which are present in the, uh, in the waveform in general. Now in this lecture, we are going to have some more understanding through the simulation of induction motor drive driven in open loop mode. So we have taken an induction motor drive which is basically operating a load. Now, as I stated earlier, the option could be that we can have the direct three phase supply provided to this motor and we can operate this load. So, the problems associated with this kind of direct online start we have seen is that large starting current and no speed control. So we need some more arrangement to have the speed varying as per our requirement and we need some arrangement to have some constraint or some restrictions on the starting current. So if we see the simulation we have taken somewhere around 160 kilowatt motor, which is basically 400 volts line to line, 50 hertz is the synchronous or the, the rated frequency. So at rated load, this machine has an RPM of 1487 RPM and uh, this is having a four pole of course and a squirrel gauge configuration we are considering over here. So a preset model we are considering for this MATLAB system simulation and we have run this simulation with direct online. So we have given the supply to the motor and now we see the response of the motor in terms of the current, the torque and the speed. So we see that there is obviously huge current that is coming on the motor when we start at direct with the direct supply and then around one second, at around one second we are loading this uh, machine with say 50% of the torque and then the machine is building up that torque and it is operating. So the current level which was settled to a lower value, so we can zoom and see. This is what it was settled to around 100, 125 amp peak. Now it has gone to somewhere around 250 or 275 ampere peak. So this is on account of loading what we have given. So somewhere around 700 Newton meter torque is provided to the system and motor is around operating with that. So the problems associated with direct online, huge uh, starting current and no speed control. We do not have a way to change the speed of the system. So which is why we go with inverter based system and then we go for the methods such as the V by F operation of the system. So we need an inverter to operate the motor now. We have a DC bus voltage where the inverter is connected and then we have the motor connected after that. Now first we are considering say if we take the sine triangle pulse width modulation technique then how to operate this motor. First we need to understand that with sine triangle PWM when we are trying to operate, how much DC bus voltage should be given to the inverter. This is important to understand for open loop drive because we need to operate the motor at rated flux. So we do not have the way to control it through a controller or something which is why this should be computed offline and manually. So we want to operate this system at rated flux and because we do not have any controller, so we need to pre-decide on the basis of the DC bus voltage that how much flux we are going to have in the machine. So normally we want to operate the motor up to 
the rated voltage say 400 volts line to line RMS when the fundamental frequency is 50 hertz the rated frequency of the machine. Now the VDC can be reverse calculated on basis of what output is generated from the inverter corresponding to sine triangle PWM. So we understand that the fundamental component of VRO can be written as MR VDC by 2 sin omega t which means that the amplitude of this output voltage is somewhere around MR times of VDC. So when we are saying MR it basically has two components the modulation index and the sin omega t. Modulation index can change up to 1. So what we are saying is that we are restricting our modulation index within the peaks of the carrier. So if carrier is varying between plus minus 1, we are going to keep our sine wave confined within this height so that we operate within the linear zone of modulation. So which means that we have restricted the value of m to be 1 at max or at 50 hertz which means that now we can generate a peak value of phase voltage as VDC by 2. This could be the maximum peak phase voltage and this must correspond to the voltage corresponding to the rating of the machine. So we have VDC computed from this as so which comes nearly around 653 volts. So for this simulation we have considered somewhere around 670 or something volts considering that some drop and some other non adiarities may be there. So slightly higher voltage we have considered. Now with this we are operating and because we are going for V by F control so we are increasing the modulation index linearly proportional to the frequency. However, for the lower zone, we are keeping some minimum value of modulation index as a boost in the voltage. And then it is becoming fixed after 50 hertz. So, which is what is done over here. If we try to see, this is the modulation index which is shown in the green line and the modulating signals are basically three phase modulating signals are shown over here. So we have a constant magnitude for the initial phase which is then gradually increasing and going all the way up to the desired frequency. So here I have kept the desired frequency at 40 hertz. So I am saturating this frequency at 40 hertz. So I want to operate the motor at 40 hertz fundamental frequency only and then the modulation index becomes constant and which is why we have fixed magnitude of modulating signals further. Now if we see the current torque and speed profiles how we are generating. So first observation what we have is that the current is now restricted to nearly 400 or 700 volts of peak. There are some oscillations coming which can be attributed to different instabilities associated with the induction machine. However, apart from that, the current is not having a very large value and the speed is settling as per the desired frequency. So somewhere around 1200 RPM, the speed is settling. And when we load around 
one second still the speed is able to follow the reference and it is able to settle at a given frequency. Now, we can zoom and see the current profile over here. So, there are several things which we can understand from the harmonic spectrum of the current. So, let us try to take a look at that. So, we are taking one cycle of the this 40 hertz frequency and that window is shown over here. So, now if you try to compute the F50 and we try to see how the, the harmonics are distributed in the profile. So, we have TSD of around 75 percent coming over here and with respect to the fundamental which is taken as a base value. So, around 281 uh, ampere is the peak value. We have other harmonics coming over here. Now, the points to be noted over here is because we are operating with a fixed switching frequency which is somewhere around 350 hertz. It is a large motor. So, we are trying to operate at a lower switching frequency which is 350 hertz and our fundamental frequency is 40 hertz. So, there is no relation uh, in, in the pulse number which is the, the pulse number ratio FSW by F1 is basically not an R triple N number. So, which means the symmetry requirements are not satisfied for this particular asynchronous sine triangle PWM. Now, because of that, we are able to see different harmonics appearing in the spectrum, which are not basically odd triple n uh, multiples of the fundamental, but, but which are basically something like second order or third order, then fourth, fifth. So, almost all the harmonics are present in the spectrum. Now, the consequences of this may be that the corresponding current would be flowing in the system and it may affect in terms of heating and other problems associated with the motor drive. Now, we can see the torque profile. To understand how torque is getting generated, we will take it relative to the DC component. So, once again, because we have the pulse number which is not R triple N number, so we are finding that the harmonics which are appearing So, once again, because the switching frequency and the fundamental are not having the correct ratio which is desired, so pulse number is not R triple N. So, which is why we are observing the torque harmonics of almost all the all the orders, say first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, though sixth harmonic is the dominant part. However, we have almost all the orders of torque harmonic present in the system. Now, what and how it may impact? is basically we may have 
mechanical resonance which may get triggered because of these frequencies which are at the lower range. Generally, the mechanical resonance frequency is at a lower value compared to the electrical resonance frequency. So, having a lower order harmonic is more harmful compared to higher order torque harmonic. Now, peak to peak ripple and other things can also be seen over here. So, this is having around say 1600 Newton meter peak to peak torque ripple, which is on account of low switching frequency what we are having only 350 hertz. So, which is why this kind of peak to peak ripple is observed. Now, if we move from asynchronous sine triangle PWM to synchronous sine triangle PWM, we basically need to have pulse number which is R triple N. So, for this particular case, we have considered a pulse number of 9, which basically results into a switching frequency of 360 hertz, which is closer to the previous switching frequency what we have seen, just a difference of 10 hertz. However, we would see the impact created by the synchronized sine triangle PWM on the open loop drive. So, the meaning of synchronization is that we are generating the carrier in such a manner that it is basically having is basically having a multiple of frequency which is basically odd triple and multiple compared to the fundamental and also as much as possible the zero crossing of the modulating signals is same as the carrier waveform. Now, if we look at the FFT and other parts, It is a similar frequency. So, basically the total harmonic distortion is also going to be similar and the difference what we are going to see is going to come in the spectrum compared to the asynchronous sine triangle PWM. So, in case of asynchronous sine triangle PWM, we had almost all the harmonic orders present whereas here we have primarily 5th and 7th appearing over here and then 11th and 13th appearing over here. So, only odd non triple n harmonics are appearing in the spectrum and if we have the harmonics which are constrained to only particular order or particular frequency it is generally easier to handle through filter and other means now the consequence of this directly comes on the torque of the system so we can see the torque profile so with respect to the dc component once again let us so we have the spectrum of our, the, the torque over here and we are finding that dominantly only the sixth harmonic torque is appearing in the spectrum for the initial part and then we have 12th, 18th and so on. So, we have very few restricted number of torque harmonics appearing in the system on contrary to the asynchronous sine triangle PWM. So, we do not need to handle or we do not need to 
care about the mechanical resonance which is appearing for lower frequencies. So, these components are not available. So, we have a neat and clean spectrum available over here. The peak to peak ripple, however, is may not be very much different from asynchronous sine triangle PWM. Here also, we may have some 1600 Newton meter or 1800 Newton meter kind of peak to peak ripple, which is all right. Given the switching frequency, what we are dealing with, it is kind of common phenomena. So, with synchronous sine triangle PWM, we are able to restrict the harmonics, torque harmonics only to particular orders and line current harmonics also only to fixed orders which are present in the spectrum. Now, we may go for other PWM methods to understand how the harmonic spectrum is changing. So, we may look for say something called as the square wave operation. Because we are going for very low switching frequency operation say around 350 hertz or so, we may look for other options which are available. So, one of the option could be that we operate with a square wave output from the inverter and then once again because we are not having any flexibility in the output waveform, we will be able to operate only at a particular speed. So, here we have taken 50 hertz frequency at which we are operating and we are only generating the output which is basically having a fixed wave shape. Now, we are not focusing on the start starting of induction motor for this part because this is already taken care through some V by F method or something. However, we are more trying to understand how this kind of waveform is going to impact the line current and torque harmonics. So, once again, if we operate with this kind of PWM waveform, we are going to generate output which may have dominant harmonics coming in the system. The wave shape is quite different from sinusoidal waveform. Now, we can look for the spectrum to understand which all harmonics are dominantly present in this particular system. So, once again, we are taking the current, har current uh, harmonic spectrum and so as expected, because we are operating at a fixed frequency, however, we are maintaining all the waveform symmetries. So, we have all the waveform symmetries, full wave symmetry, half wave symmetry, quarter wave symmetry and three phase symmetry. So, we expect only harmonics of order odd non triplet integer. And that is what we are able to see in this spectrum. So, this is the fundamental and so we have only fifth. 7th, 11th, 13th and the, they are gradually reducing as we have seen that because the order of harmonic current or the magnitude of harmonic current is basically having a factor of 
order of the particular harmonic number and this is how it is computed. So, this could be the leakage uh, inductance. So, because a factor of n is coming within the computation, so that is natural filtering what is observed over here for the current. So, we have this kind of current and THD somewhere around 60 percent we are able to generate with this kind of system which is operating at 50 hertz. Now, we can take a look at the torque profile how it is and which type of harmonic is present in the system. So, once again because all the waveform symmetries are maintained and we have primarily 5th and 7th harmonic coming, dominantly 5th and 7th harmonic coming in this spectrum, the 6th harmonic torque is basically dominantly present in the torque profile. The other harmonics are there but at a quite lower value, but these are also of only multiples of 6. So, we have 6th, 12th, 18th and so on. And the wave shape of the torque also looks very, very close to the sixth harmonic waveform because that is the dominant component which is coming. So, peak to peak ripple can be seen to be somewhere around say 500 Newton meter and we are obtaining this from the, the square wave operation. So, what we understand is that with the square wave operation, Predominantly, we are going to have the fifth and seventh harmonic present in the line current and on account of that, we have dominantly sixth harmonic torque which is going to be present in the torque profile. Now, some better ways of operating this motor at a different frequency we have seen. So, one of the method could be that if we wish to vary our fundamental frequency and we want to change our speed could be the selective harmonic elimination. Now, once again, because we are trying to target lower switching frequency, so we will take a pulse number of 5, which means that we are considering two switching angles within the quarter cycle. <clears throat> so, what we have tried to do we wish to have values of alpha 1 and alpha 2 within this boundary such that <clears throat> one of the dominant harmonic dominant voltage harmonic can be eliminated and we would see that how the system is responding to that whether we have some improvement in the total harmonic distortion or we have some improvement in the torque profile. So, because we are operating with a system where all the waveform symmetries are intact, we are primarily worried about only odd non triplet harmonics. So, predominantly 5th, 7th, 11th, 13th, etc. And in case of 6 step operation, we have seen that the most dominant harmonic could be like the 5th harmonic. So, we will target, we will try to have the 5th harmonic voltage going to 0 in this waveform while we maintain the modulation index at a certain value and 
given the constraint for the switching angles. So, with this constraint, we are going to have solution for this. Now, this part we have already seen that if we try to solve, we are going to get several solutions which may, which can be plotted in the alpha 1, alpha 2 plane and it may look like this. So, we are essentially talking about this green waveform over here. This is what we are primarily talking about. So, we have multiple options as far as we want to operate at a particular, as far as we, we want to have a particular modulation index, we have multiple options. However, the solution may not be available for complete range of M. So, if we talk about this higher part of this solution, the modulation index may be restricted to 0.8 max and on the lower side it may further be extended to somewhere around 0.94 which is all right given the condition that okay we want to operate with selective harmonic elimination and we do not want to go up to say 50 hertz of operating frequency we can operate it somewhere ar around say 45 47 hertz and we can reduce and have any other variable frequency within that range. Now, let us say we wish to operate this machine at a modulation index of 0.7 which means that our fundamental frequency would be somewhere, somewhere around 35 hertz for this particular motor. So, which means that we are trying to target the this curve which corresponds to 0.7 modulation index. Now, again as I said there are two possibilities, one the intersection with V5 and V5 equal to 0 and M equal to 0.7 comes at higher angle value and at lower angle value. So, we may choose for some reasons this higher angle value and we can operate the motor with those switching angles. So, this is nearly the alpha may be nearly around 75 point something degree and alpha 2 may be somewhere around 80, 82 or 83 degrees somewhere. Approximately the exact values can be figured out and with this we can operate the system. Now, the second constraint comes that do we need to have the same amount of DC bus voltage as we have taken for the sine triangle PWM? So, the answer is not true because we have seen in case of sine triangle PWM, the maximum voltage which can be achieved is basically VDC by 2, whereas for SHE PWM or even square wave operation, which is the extreme limit of the SHE PWM the output voltage may go up to 2 VDC by pi. So, our computations are going to get modified slightly for the DC bus voltage according to the V peak phase value and from here if we compute for sine triangle PWM, this may come around 512 volts approximately. So, we would take around 520 volts for our system and we would operate the system at a modulation index of 0.7 and fundamental frequency of 35 hertz. Now, let us see how the system is responding to such PWM waveform. Now, once again here also the focus is not in the starting of the induction motor. However, we are only looking for the steady state operation of the system 
with this kind of PWM waveform at 35 hertz fundamental frequency. So, this is the kind of waveform and the torque profile generated from the, the, the SHE PWM. And if we try to look at the spectrum, what is happening with the current waveform? So, as suggested, because we are working to eliminate the fifth harmonic from the spectrum, so we are able to achieve that value to a very good extent. And apart from fundamental and then the fifth harmonic which is eliminated, we have the seventh harmonic component which is very much dominant in the spectrum, which is naturally observed that if we try to eliminate a particular harmonic, the basically next harmonic gets little bit boosted and with this arrangement we are able to get a TSD of nearly 84 percent which is not a bad number considering that we are operating a high power motor and with such low switching frequency. So, here because we have fundamental frequency at 35 hertz the pulse number is at 5. So, we have switching frequency of 165 hertz nearly which is quite low and given these constraints we are able to achieve so much percentage of THD at say around 50 percent of the load for the machine. Now once again because we have the symmetries retained in the system apart from this we have only 11th, 13th, 17th, 19th and so on these kind of harmonics present in the system oh, relatively at lower value. Now we are going to see the impact of this PWM on the torque harmonic profile. So, this is how the torque profile has appeared for the particular PWM what we have considered as SHE PWM. The peak to peak ripple is again nearly 1600 Newton meter and if we try to see that compared to the square wave operation where we had both fifth and seventh harmonics present, we were getting somewhere around 30 percent of the sixth harmonic torque. However, when we have eliminated the fifth harmonic voltage and of course, we are operating at a lower fundamental frequency. However, the value of sixth harmonic torque can be seen as as high as 80 percent of the DC torque. So, here DC torque value is some around, somewhere around 700 Newton meter. And so, we are observing the sixth harmonic torque to be as high as somewhere around 550 Newton meter or 560 Newton meter, which is a quite significant value. However, because we are able to maintain our symmetries and do things properly in the waveform, we are not having any frequency which is lesser than sixth harmonic and the other frequencies are only multiple of sixth. So, in a way, there is some improvement in the current profile. However, elimination of one harmonic, say fifth harmonic, may actually boost the sixth harmonic value. This can be understood from the fact that while deriving the expression of sixth harmonic torque, we have encountered that the Sixth harmonic torque is basically generated due to interaction of both the voltage harmonics.
fifth and seventh. Now, somewhere when both the harmonics are present, the partial cancellation of sixth harmonic torque generated by these harmonics could be there. However, with the elimination of one harmonic, this possibility goes away. So, we may get some boost in the sixth harmonic voltage, sixth harmonic torque. Now, instead of having a particular harmonic eliminated in the system, instead of having say fifth harmonic or seventh harmonic or any other dominant harmonic eliminated going equal to zero, we may look for some other option to improve the total harmonic distortion or the value of say peak to peak torque ripple or having minimization of the most dominant torque harmonic. So, these kind of PWM techniques basically fall under the optimal PWM what we have discussed in the previous lecture. Now, once again, we are operating with a similar pulse number, say P equal to 5. So, we are basically having two switching angles within the quarter cycle, similar to the selective harmonic elimination PWM. However, the objective is not same as SHEPWM. Here we are considering that instead of eliminating the fifth harmonic, we would focus on minimization of ITHD. So, this should be minimized under this constraint and for a desired modulation index. So, what we do essentially is that we have taken the equivalent of ITHD at no load and we have taken the weighted THD of voltage and we are trying to minimize considering the first 25 harmonics for the expression of VTHD. So, if I expand this expression, So, we have the factor harmonic order coming in the denominator of each harmonic voltage and so we are calling it weighted THD of line to line voltage or weighted THD of line to neutral voltage. The, volt the harmonics which are basically getting eliminated due to the waveform symmetry are basically not considered in the expression. So, we do not have V3, V2, V3, V4 and so on. So, any of the even and triple N harmonics are not considered in this. Now, if we try to solve this under the given constraints, we have seen that we tend to get a solution which will have a definite value for each modulation index and the solution for the switching angles may look something like this. So, what this graph is suggesting is that we, we are plotting the values of alpha 1 and alpha 2 against the modulation index. So, for each modulation index, we have only unique value of alpha 1 and alpha 2 appearing in the system. So, this red corresponds to alpha 2 and blue corresponds to alpha 1. So, we have these two switching angles coming over here and we have a discontinuity also coming at this point which we have discussed in the previous lecture which is alright for open loop operation and now if we try to operate our drive 
say at 35 hertz, which means we are looking for a modulation index of 0.7, we are going to look for solution corresponding to this point. Now, this solution may be somewhere closer to 72 degree and alpha 2 somewhere closer to 82 degree. These are approximate values. The exact values can be worked out through the numerical solutions. And if we observe that these values are not very far from the SHEPWM, these are very, very close. However, the change in the switching angle position, what it does basically, it changes the place where we are operating on the modulation index curve. So, instead of operating at this point, which was the case of SHE PWM, now we are searching for a better place to operate on this curve. So, we are slightly shifted somewhere in, in between the V5 and V7 equal to 0 graphs. And that is where we are finding that the V weighted THD is finding its minimum value, which is our objective for the optimization. So now, with this if we try to operate and because this waveform is also very similar to SHEPWM, the VDC requirements are also same. So we are keeping somewhere around 520 volts. Now if we try to operate with this, Once again, ignoring the start process, this is what we are able to achieve with the optimal PWM in terms of current and torque profile. Now, if we try to see the harmonic spectrum of current, So naturally, we find that because the objective was not to eliminate any harmonic, so which is why all the non-triplane harmonics are present in the spectrum. So apart from the fundamental, we have 5th, 7th, 11th, 13th, 17th, 19th and so on, which may be present after the cancellation of the harmonics due to waveform symmetry. And because none of these are eliminated, these are basically getting settled to a value where we can get the value of ITSD or weighted TSD of voltage which is minimum for any, poss any other possible solution for the particular modulation index. So, if we observe, we are finding a TSD of somewhere around 75 percent for this particular optimal PWM for the given same condition of load torque and fundamental frequency. Now, if we compare this spectrum with the SHE PWM spectrum, there we had 84 percent ITSD and the seventh harmonic was quite dominating, it was quite large and fifth harmonic was zero. On the other hand, we have some amount of fifth and seventh harmonic and other harmonics also present over there managed in such a manner that we are operating at a lower ITSD value. So, which is definitely an improvement over the selective harmonic elimination PWM. Now, this is in close correlation with what I was suggesting earlier that instead of operating at the intersection, we have moved our point slightly towards the place where weighted TSD is minimized. So, it must be noted and I am reiterating it for the for clarity is that when we are operating at with selective harmonic PWM, selective harmonic elimination PWM, we are not bothered about the value of weighted TSD as outcome. We are only bothered about the elimination of any particular harmonic say fifth or seventh or anything. And thus, whatever value of weighted TSD of voltage or ITSD is obtained, we have that as the number. Whereas, when we are operating with optimal PWM, 
we are not looking for any elimination of particular harmonic but we are very much concerned about what is the final number or what is the final value of the total harmonic distortion in the line current so our objective changes from voltage harmonic to a more relevant term which could be there say line to line or this uh, line current total harmonic distortion so that is how the optimal pwm has improved the value of total harmonic distortion in line current and now let us see the impact of that on the torque harmonic so it is very interesting to note though our peak to peak ripple still remains similar say somewhere around 1500 or 1600 newton meter we are operating with optimal pwm we have not eliminated any harmonic however this value of sixth harmonic torque has reduced significantly compared to selective harmonic elimination pwm so if we compare these two harmonic spectrum we had 80% of the dc value as the sixth harmonic torque for the selective harmonic elimination pwm however when we try to minimize the weighted thd or line thd in the line current we are not eliminating any harmonic but we are settling to a value where v5 v7 and all other harmonics are arranged in such a manner that we are getting a minimum value of weighted thd of voltage or line current thd we are finding that the torque harmonic is also getting affected and it is reduced significantly so now the value is only nearly 10% of the dc component which is around 700 newton meter so we are getting somewhere around 70 newton meter compared to the 500 newton meter case for the she pwm so once again to have the confirmation that when we are having a motor drive which is basically operated with low switching frequency pwm it may not be a good idea to actually eliminate just one harmonic from this pair of harmonics which are generating a particular harmonic if at all we wish to eliminate say harmonic fifth from the system and we have capability we should try to eliminate seventh as well along with that otherwise the result may be very bad in terms of the torque harmonic which may be very very high the best option could be if we are not able to eliminate two harmonics at a time which means our switching frequency is not permitting us to go for higher value and we are restricted to have a lower pulse number it is better to operate the system with optimal pwm and in this manner not only we can reduce the total harmonic distortion in the line current but we can also somewhere reduce the value of the most dominant torque harmonic now once again just to have the complete picture because we are maintaining all the symmetries we are having only odd non triplane harmonics present in the spectrum and on account of that we have harmonics coming which are only multiple of 6 the torque harmonics which are present in the system are only multiple of 6 there are no lower values no lower frequencies which are present in the system which means the chances of initiating or chances of triggering a mechanical resonance at a lower frequency is not there with optimal pwm so which is what we find that the optimal pwm may be advantages in many ways compared to she pwm and in fact sine triangle pwm also at a comparable switching frequency so with this we are closing the second session of this course ev vehicle dynamics and electric motor drives 
and we have seen several concepts related to motor drives in this module where we started with basics of DC motor drive and we have done the closed loop control of DC motor. Then we have gone to understand how induction motor operates and what are the basics fundamentals related to torque generation and then we have seen the methods to start induction motor, how to have efficient way and a better way to start that and there we have found that we have found that the V by F method for starting is the most optimized one and then we have gone to understand that how DC to AC power converter can help us in achieving the V by F control. Further, we have seen some PWM techniques such as square wave operation. We have seen selective harmonic elimination PWM, optimal PWM and we have seen sine triangle PWM to complete the open loop V by F operation of induction motor. Now with this we are ready to operate say our electric vehicle in open loop mode with the induction motor and in closed loop mode with DC motor and the concepts which we have discussed over here could be very useful in designing the components and the equipment what we are going to install on the vehicle. Now in the next phase of the course we would be discussing the concepts related to the closed loop control of PMSM the same which basically comes as the rotor flux oriented vector control of induction motor and we would see some concepts related to magnetics and then we would proceed for the special machines such as switch reluctance motor BLDC. We would see what are the ways to control that and a part of next session would also be dedicated to some advanced PWM schemes such as bus clamping, harmonic injection, and space vector PWM. So, that is all for this session, and thank you very much for attending this part of the course. And we would continue with the other discussed part in the next session. Thank you so much.